What is it? And why are all those people jumping up and down? For these and other questions affecting your life, welcome. Upon this rock, yeah! Upon this rock, an analysis of the metaphysical, supernatural, spiritual issues affecting us and the human condition today. This program's for you. With testimony, a few messages of hope and joy, a little good news to make your life and world show more life. I'm Dr. James Wesley Smith. Our guests today include just plain folks to help you light your way. We'll have details in a moment about today's program. Some folks say prayer is a sacred, a private thing. Among the questions asked often, why should we go to church and pray when every man is a God? You can talk to God without going to church. The answer is simple. Why do you go to a store for groceries or a gas station for fuel? Why see the doctor to keep from getting sick? And once you are, why go to get well? Why do you take medicine? There are many things you can make and do yourself, right? But since we Christians believe Jesus is present in the host or Holy Eucharist, at the Mass, in the Mass, and after Mass, this presence is placed in an enclosure called the tabernacle. Why not go when he, God, is within a few feet of you, physically? Makes him listen harder. Of course, it depends on what you believe. The Immaculate Heart of Mary and the Sacred Heart of Jesus says, Jesus have done great things. In our testimony this segment, one reader writes, um, So in this type of celebration of which you speak, anybody is welcome with you. Is that what you're saying? Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. Is this something that the boss, whoever that might have been, or the person that made up this mass um, structured it that way? Or is this something that the individual minister or priest has uh, decided to take it upon himself or herself to do. You know, I'm sure it's the structure of the church that it's open to all and any everybody to come into church. To uh, the word. Aren't you folks afraid there's some crazies coming into church disrupting things? <laughs> they <or>? have. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we've already had some of that, but yeah. you continue the service. But you continue the service. Yeah, with, with the spirit there, it usually leads them.
minister about two years ago in the bar said, you have to bring something with you. Here is some soul food for thought. Hundreds of millions of souls attend daily a free banquet, one of the longest ongoing celebrations in the history of mankind. This feast takes place simultaneously each and every minute throughout the four corners of the world. Invited participants span the human spectrum. African, Jew, Russian, Thai, the British and the Chinese are all among those included. Still, of the many called, few choose to attend this meal of joy, love, and thanksgiving. We do not speak merely symbolically here. Under the appearance of bread and wine, we are united to the body and blood of Jesus Christ. Impossible, some say? Cannibalism? Before you laugh, consider that in our real world, there is no such thing as a solid. You know, Jesus said, peace to give to you, open up your heart, peace to give to you, but never let it part, blessing on your spouse, favor on your house, and my peace to give to you. Peter, upon this rock I shall build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Uh, we're here with Pamela Perry, who's a liturgist. That's one of the people who planned the celebration uh, on one of the holy days or holidays in the week, which is generally Sunday in some of the denominations in the Christian church. Pamela. There's something called the Mass. Can you um, share with us uh, what is it? Mass, as you just spoke of, is just a celebration of praising the Lord and song and word, the word, good word, and uh, dance sometimes within our church. You know, that's interesting because some places in Africa, I understand, dance is a part of the celebration. And it really brings the people out and really gets the people into the spirit uh, of that uh, particular event or situation. Uh, can you tell us something about the Mass? What is it? How do you guys go about uh, determining? Determining what? The celebration? The celebration. How do you plan the celebration? Well, this, it, the Mass is already a structured Mass. How? In what way? And for the Catholics, you know it is very structured. In what way? Well, we have the uh, introductory rite. We have uh, the penance service, the communion service, all within this, mm -hmm. this structure of the Mass. What, what is the penance service? 
What is the penance service? The penance service is that we just bring to mind our sins. It's like a rebaptizing of ourselves, you know, asking for forgiveness and to uh, re, uh, reunite ourselves with God mm -hmm. and our brothers and sisters. And the communion service, what, what is that? The communion uh, service is bringing the body and blood of Christ upon the altar and sharing it in unity with one another in the community. It's a form or symbol within the Catholic Church. Okay, I gotta ask you this. And I know some people think it's kind of strange. You mean you actually bring some corpse up on the altar and everybody stands around? No, we don't. It's symbolic. It's a, something called a host. Mm -hmm. And the wine, which is in a chalice, which they have a particular ceremony for words that they say over it, which in the Catholic religion, they say it comes, becomes the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. And the body being the bread, and the blood being the blood that he shed for us on Calvary. Okay, Calvary meaning the place that he... The place where he was crucified. He was and crucified, died. okay. That was 2,000 years ago, if I remember history correctly. Um, what else are you folks doing in this Mass? What is this introductory rite? Um, everybody stands up and introduces themselves, or...? Correct. That is so. How is that done? Introductory right is um, you can just introduce yourself to the brother or sister next to you or behind you, mm -hmm. surrounding you, and just welcome them to the church. Is this something that you folks at your particular church is, uh, has planned or structured? or? No, no, it's always been structured that way. Who, who structured it that way? Well, the Catholic religion. Okay, the Catholic religion uh, last year, five years ago, ten years ago. No, I'm sure it's centuries ago. Centuries ago. Okay. Uh, what do, I, I'm really curious about this communion thing. Um, what is it? You folks eat bread, drink grape juice or something? Or, or what? Uh, you sit around a table and have a feast? Or how is that done? No, we have something that, well, this used to be a communion rail, which we we're trying to eliminate. But mm -hmm. The people are in line, and they come up to the altar and take partake of this bread and wine. And it is wine; mm -hmm. it is not grape juice or apple okay. juice or such. Okay. Um, how long do these masses usually take? Well, ours at St. Bridget's. That's in Los Angeles. In Los Angeles, okay. usually last about an hour and a half. Okay. But it could last up to 35 to 45 minutes.